Coming up this week on The Archer's Choice. Who needs blood when you see a dead bear? Ralphie, I shot your bear. Yeah, honey, you shot our bear. This is The Archer's Choice. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice on part two of Baron Down in Alberta. That's right. We're going to go back up with Trophy Book Outfitters and D Dan Hungle. Mm. No, D the what was it? The Barologist? It's a Barologist, yes. yes. Bar Professor Bar of Barology. Is that what it is? I think so. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Cool. This week's lucky logo is going to be Beeman. So if you see the Beeman logo at the end of the show, we'll let you know what you're supposed to do with that. And you might get some arrows. arrows. Some arrows? Arrows. Mm -hmm. You got speech and, you know, no. okay? No. You just... feeling all right? I'm feeling okay. You got okay. a fever? Oh, no. Okay, well, how about if we just go on and get into some hunts, shall we? Yes. Okay, let's just roll that footage. Roll that wonderful barren down footage. We're heading into, I don't know where, but but I had to, Dan said that we're going to be probably into a lot of, uh, this is where a high percentage of color bears are taken, or seen at least, so. One of the most important things when placing a bear bait is to find good bear habitat. Ideally, I look for large timber, mature forests, that has a good mix of pine, spruce, perhaps some poplar. Another thing that's really important is to have a good water source nearby. Bears need water they're in the spring with their very thick coats, they get hot. They also need shade. This is unreal. This site is really, really hit hard. You're gonna like this one. One of the most important things when you're sitting in a stand is to make sure you don't move or make noise. Bears are very sensitive to the sight when they come in. They're very alert and they often sit at a, at a distance and listen and look for any signs of danger. Movement is very critical as well as any noise you may make.
Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of the Archer's Choice. But, yes. you know, a lot of people are going to wonder why I didn't shoot that blonde. And I'll yes, tell you why. why. We had photos on the stealth cam of yeah. two blonde bears. Really? And one. Okay, well, we need to bump the commercial. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. And now, Vic, it's your turn. It's my turn because I shot the first bear, then you shot the second bear. So now it's my turn to hunt again. And since you already, you know. Well, I passed up. We were swap swapping evenings. Yeah, is that what we were doing? Yep. Okay, well, now it's my turn. Let's go see what happens. Whew. It was a cinnamon, it wasn't a blonde. <laughs> it's really dirty. When we first when he first came in, I was glassing him. And he was just he's wet. And then as I was watching him, he got drier and drier. He's muddy, but he looks like he, he went definitely went further than my first pair, but I hit him air high, but I saw blood on it. I mean right when I hit him I saw it. Oh, yeah. And he went running around. It's 4.50. Ralphie. I shot your bear. Honey, you shot our bear. He's cinnamon, he's not blonde. It's a blonde bear, don't get yourself. Time for this week's Bow Hunting World Magazine Tip of the Week. This week's bow hunting world tip of the week is understanding the spine of an arrow. You know, a lot of times we get caught in something and we want to go and try to get the best deal on our arrows and we don't check out the spine. The reason for that spine is very specific. It is set up for your draw weight and your draw length. So if you have an underspined arrow, you're going to have a real difficult time trying to get those broadheads to fly and vice versa. However, if you have an overspined arrow, and you don't have the money to maybe go out and buy another dozen arrows, you can make this shaft work more by putting a heavier broadhead on the front end. That is, if you don't have the money to go get a different spine, you can get away and you can tune it up by taking, making that shaft work more by using a heavier tip. That is your Bowhunting World Tip of the Week. Did you see? Oh, I got a beautiful cinnamon bear. That's a blonde bear. It's a cinnamon bear. Because blonde. I know how much you want a blonde bear, and I did not want to shoot a blonde bear out from underneath you. So you don't want to go anyway, anywhere till we go and actually go and get our hands on him. So we'll be right back. You know, have you seen a lot of the shows where Vicky does this? I just want to keep it there for about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Baron Down in Alberta. And now, well, let's go help Vicky recover her blonde bear. Tell you what. 
We're up here with Trophy Book Outfitters. Dan Hungle. Unbelievable. <laughs> we just got in our stand. Shot a bear, a cinnamon bear. Because I'm not going to say blonde anymore because it was rough stream and I happened to be in the stand. And he was bigger than the other two blondes we've seen on this trip already. So we've already seen two blondes. Let's go get my arrow. Go find my bear. <laughs> He's right through here, through the dark. See, you gotta go down, there's a pile of it. has been one heck of a bear hunt. Shot a big old book back there, and now we've got a beautiful cinnamon bear to full mount. Because we don't have one of these colors in the household, darling. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at how white his claws are. Can you see that? We're on all the black bears. There is just black, black, or maybe a streak of white in there. Beautiful. Beautiful bear. I'm actually kind of anxious to see what it looks like when he's all dried out. <laughs> Look at that. Dan, Trophy Book Outfitters, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, beautiful bear. You know, Vic, you did get the blonde, and I'm proud of you. I'm real happy. And But I know that you really want a chocolate. Don't go away, we'll be right back and you know I Would you just get done? I sure hope maybe I should have shot that big big black bear. Maybe. Don't go away. Have to wait and see what happens. Ooh. Welcome back. You know, I've been real patient and Vicky was wondering why, but I didn't tell you. We had on our stealth cam, we got photos of a chocolate bear. Not a bar. Not, not a bar. chocolate candy bar. A chocolate bar. But a chocolate bear.
Well, your trophy book, a lot of the hunters have the radios. We just call our guide Phil. The bear was standing right here. And he ran right through here. There's blood right there. Here's blood, here's blood. Holy cow. Allow me to tell you something. We always said Alberta was the place to be. We found the outfitter, Trophy Book Outfitters, Dan Hungle and his guys. I, I can't. Dan, you have Vicky and I speechless. We never, never in my life look at the size of that bear right there. Oh, look, chocolate. Oh, thank you. That's the closest you're gonna get because I got him. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wah. I got a blonde. I got a chocolate. You really wanted a chocolate. But I have two blondes now. So what's your story now? We huh? really hope you enjoyed this week's show. We want to thank Dan Hungle and all the people up at Trophy Book Outfitters. Alberta Tourism. If you saw the Beeman logo this week, you need to log on to archerschoice.com. Click on the lucky logo button and someone's going to win some Beeman arrows. So thanks for watching. <laughs> what are we watching? Archer's Choice. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, we'll see you next week. Same time. Same channel. Right here oh. on the Archer's Choice. <laughs>